I'm going to side rail on this one just for a second. I actually uh, used to, uh, when I was in the corporate world, um, let's just say I had a very difficult conversation. My, my role was in staffing and recruiting. I was working for a multinational global client. Um, billions of dollars in their portfolio. And I'm working with the chief diversity officer for the company. And one of the positions that I had was, a, a, they had several diversity roles up. And um, the company at the same time, in the midst of the pandemic, was putting in a vaccine mandate. And in the midst of this conversation, the, uh, the, the chief officer says to me, hey, can we, can, we like, can we just talk for a second? And I was like, sure. And she's like, I want your honest opinion. Okay. And she says, she, she herself is a person of color, okay, so understand, she's, she's coming from a particular perspective as she approaches this conversation. She says, look, I feel like we need, I've been told we need to take one of these diversity positions down. And she said, I'm really concerned. Do you think it's going to hurt us as a company if people see that particular position come down? And I thought about it for a minute and I said to her, look, honestly, positions go up and come down all the time. I said, is this an internal or an external pressure that you're concerned about? She says, well, probably more internally, because she said, I know we have some people who really watch these roles. I said, okay. I said, well, in that case, you need to be able to have a conversation with their manager and them when that position comes down, if they have a problem with it, and just explain to them, this is a budget issue. We've had to cut positions all across the company, and this is just one of a, one of a few that we need to, to set aside. If we have the budget in the future, we're going to open it back up. And I said, and deal with it from that way with integrity within the company. I said, can I be equally candid back to you uh, in my answer? And she says, absolutely. I said, okay. I said, if you're, I said, what I'm hearing you say is you're legitimately concerned about the company's image in the culture and whether they're a great diverse place to work for. And she said, 100%. I said, okay. I said, given what we currently know, and, and again, this is going back to like early stages of the pandemic, we're getting information, you know, left and right. I said to her, my understanding is that 40, 60, 40 to 60% of the unvaccinated are people of color. And your company is putting in a vaccine mandate for all corporate positions. And yet, you say as a company that you have a, you have a push, you have a desire to have a diverse workforce at the corporate level in leadership levels. And I said, honestly, those two things to me would be more of a thing that I would go, wait a minute, why are we doing that if that's true? And she, she said to me something very uncomfortable. She said, I thought but that by not doing this for our warehouse and our manufacturing positions, that would offset it. Let that truth land for you for a second. A company that's stated goal is to have diversity in its leadership positions has a vaccine mandate that they know will impact people of color disproportionately and then turns the corner and says, well, but our manufacturing positions, we didn't do that for. And one of the things that I know is they have a facility in the South that the predominant majority of the workers there are people of color. So their percentages wouldn't shift overall. You gotta understand how hot I was. I was angry because that truth was that they were willing to discriminate over a vaccine. They put a political agenda, a cautionary agenda that we now know wasn't necessary. And they're asking me about, you know, are we going to reach our stated goals? I was mad. I was really mad. Allison was in the room when I had that call. Because it's unacceptable. See, a truth of this world that's uncomfortable. The world approaches us having differences from the standpoint of saying, you must value our differences so that you can learn to appreciate one another as people. And while initially that sounds noble, that is actually objectification. Because as an artist myself, I could go to art galleries and I appreciate the aesthetic of a particular piece of art and I'm drawn to it because of its aesthetic. But as I grow as an artist, guess what I don't look at as much anymore? The aesthetic. 
I look at the quality of the work and the amount of effort that was put into that work to understand how that piece was made. See, the Bible is exactly opposite the way, to the world's way of approaching how we relate to one another. The Bible says, value people and learn from one another's differences. Not value our differences to the point where then we're forced to try to learn from each other. It doesn't work that way. LeVar Burton said it years ago that we are in a state of the heart that if we're ever gonna close some of the gaps that we have in our culture, cultures, it's a state of the heart. No legislation, no principles, no initiatives are gonna do that. We need to value each other as people and learn from our differences. That's an uncomfortable truth and it's one we must face. And I'll leave it at that. Truth doesn't always feel good, but we need to have it as part of our mindset because if my... I was asked recently, how is it that you connect, so, like how do you connect with people who are different than you? Which I thought was a very interesting way of putting it. And I said, I see a person. It's not complicated. I see a person and I want to get to know them and then appreciate what makes them them and learn from them and them learn from me. 